Hi, welcome to ERC Tipsnology. In this video, I will show you how to use an 8051 timer as a counter. Let's start. So first of all, let's talk about counter programming. Take note that timers can also be used as counters to count events happening outside the 8051. A timer can be used as a timer or as a counter. So when it is used as a counter, it will be a pulse outside of the 8051 microcontroller and it will be incremented or it will increment the TH and the TL registers. In this case, we will be using the timer mode register, TMOD, and TH and TL registers are the same for the timer discussed uh, before in the previous videos. Now, here is a program that will assume that a 1 hertz external clock is being fed into our port P3.5, or we will just call it as T1. And we will write a C program for counter 1 in mode 2. And uh, take note that mode 2 means 8-bit auto-reload. And this is to count up and display the state of the TL1 count on P1. So in other words, the ports P1, where we will be connecting some LEDs, will be taking the values of TL1. And the TL1 has only 4 bits. So in other words, the port 1 will be showing the binary count of uh, 0, 0, 0, 0 up to F, uh, up to 1, 1, 1, 1. And we will be starting the count at 0 hexadecimal number. Now in the program, you will see here include reg51.h to include the required uh, header file. We have uh, declared here sbit t1 equals p3, 5. So the port 3.5 will be uh, using t1 as its name. And then we have here t1 equals 1, which means that the port 3.5 will be taken as an input. And then we have timer mode equals to 0x60. I'll be explaining that later. And then we have th1 will be equal to 0. And then we will repeat continuously from do uh, tr1 equals 1, p1 equals tl1. tr1 will run the timer and port 1 will take the values, the values of tl1. And uh, this will be happening while the timer flag 1 is still equal to 0. And then after that, when uh, the timer stops, then we will be resetting our TR1 to 0, which means the timer will be stopped because the counting is finished. And uh, it reached already the 1, 1, 1, 1, and it will overflow. And then the timer flag 1 will be also reset to 0. So what we're talking about again is C programming of timers as counters. Now let's let me explain to you T mode. So the timer mode equals 0x60 will mean that uh, we will be using the timer as counter and specifically it will be counter 1 in mode 2. Now talking about the uh, uh, timer mode register, the timer mode register T mode is divided into two parts, the timer 1 and the timer zero. So for the timer one, we have here the timer one's uh, gate, uh, C or T, M1, M0. So the timer zero also has a gate, C slash T, M1, M0, which was discussed in previous videos. But let me focus on the value of CT. You will notice here that the gate is zero, CT is one, and then M1, M0 is one zero. Now when you put one on CT bit, C or T bit, when the timer 1 CT equals 1, it means the timer 1 will be working as a counter. So if you want the timer 1 to be a timer, we put 0. But if you want the, uh, the timer 1 to be a counter, we put 1. So you will notice here on the right that the timer 0's CT is equal to 0, which means the timer 0 will work as a timer. And if it is 1, then timer 0 will also work as a counter. But in this situation, we made it 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this means that timer 1 will become a counter. So we will just call it counter 1.
And then as uh, we have discussed before, M1, M0, we have 1, 0. This means that this is mode number 2. So that's how we set the T mode to counter 1, mode 2. We make CT of timer 1, 1. And we make, we make uh, M1, M0 as 1, 0. So we will have 0, 1, 1, 0. And uh, if you convert this binary number to uh, hexadecimal, it will be 6. That's why we have here the number 6. And then on the right, we just keep it all 0. So that's why we have here 0. So the timer 1, CT equals 1, means that the timer 1 will become counter. And we will call it counter 1. And when the timer once M1, M0 is 1, 0, it means that the timer 1 will become counter 1, mode 2, and this 1, 0 means mode 2. So in other words, 0x60 is counter 1, mode 2. Again, the, the modes, we have four modes, mode 0, mode 1, mode 2, and mode 3. And take note that we will focus ourselves on the mode 2 which is an 8-bit auto-reload, which means that uh, the TH will hold a value which is to be uh, given or reloaded to TL every time it overflows. So what will happen here is that the uh, TH will have 0, and then when it counts from 0 to F or from 0, 0, 0, 0 to F uh, to 1, 1, 1, 1, the next number, it will be called overflow because it will go back to zero. And that's the time that the TL will become zero because the TL will be reloaded or will be given the value of TH, which is zero. To make it easy, uh, TL will become zero when it reaches the maximum point and it overflowed going back to zero. So now, let's... Uh, try writing the program in a real life situation. So if we write the program from here, you will notice that this is the program that we write. And then after that, we will uh, use a Proteus simulator. And uh, there's uh, some videos I posted here to, to learn how to use the Proteus uh, simulator. Let's assume that you have done it. Then you will see here that the LEDs, there are four LEDs here. Uh, these four LEDs are connected all to 220 ohms uh, resistance or resistor, and they are all connected to P1.0, P1.1, P1.2, and P1.3. This is just to satisfy the requirement that we are supposed to write a program for counter 1 mode 2 to count up and display the state of TL1 count on P1. Of course, we all know that P1 has 8 bits and TL1 only has uh, 4 numbers or 4 bits. Therefore, although we will be displaying the value of TL1 on P1, which is 8 bits, uh, and TL1 can only show up to 4, therefore, the, uh, not all of the 8 bits or 8 pins of P1 will be used. So we only need the four bits of P1 to uh, display the values of TL1. Again, we only need four bits of, of uh, P1, which is uh, having eight bits, to display the uh, values of TL1. That's why in our circuit here, you will see that uh, we only need uh, P1.0, P1.1, P1.2, and P1.3. The reason is that the TL1 only has four bits or four numbers. And you will also see here that the port 3.5 is connected to a clock here that will be giving some pulses as given in the question. Uh, a 1 hertz external clock is being fed into pin T1. And that's port 3.5. That's why we put here a clock source here that will be giving the pulse or the timing on port 3.5. Now, if you simulate it, this will be the situation the, in, the, in the beginning. Uh, the first LED on the right will turn on to represent 0001 and then followed by 0010 because you will see that the second LED is on and then 0011, 0100, 
0101, 0110, and so on until it reaches 1111. Therefore, the, it clearly shows that uh, it will be counting from 00000 up to 1111. And this will satisfy the question here, the example here that we are supposed to make a program that will display the state of TL1 count on P1. Now, it would be better if we see the real, the actual, uh, actual uh, uh, video on how this will work. So, this is what will happen. As you can see, the LEDs are counting up. Now it's 100, uh, 1,001, 1,010, 1,011, 1,100, up to 1,111. Again, it will start from 0, 0, 0, 0 until it reaches the 1,111. So as you can see there that the LEDs are now moving up or counting up. So... It's our example and uh, going back with our slides. Again, the uh, the 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 summary of this is that uh, we created a uh, counter. Uh, we used the eighty fifty one timer as a counter and. Uh, it's shown here in this program, and I have shown you how to simulate it using Proteus. Thank you, and I hope you will subscribe so that we will reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. If you like this video, click like and subscribe, and please share it. Thank you so much. Goodbye.